Cane self-defense against violent assault using an everyday walking cane or a self-defense cane like this, some kind of tactical cane or combat cane. This is a Cane Masters Dojo training cane. Martial arts cane, Hapkido cane, cane food cane, any kind of walking cane as long as it has the crook or the hook right here. Cane self-defense is very basic, practical, immediately useful. You can learn everything you need to know in a very short period of time, walk out your door and have one of the most effective tools for self-defense against a violent assault, against uh, someone with a knife, against multiple attackers. We're gonna get started today with this first episode showing you the very basic things that you need to do to get started with your cane. Start with the hook facing up your palm on the bottom of the inside, and you're going to crank it into a circle like this. You're just gonna start making this turning motion. You're gonna keep your hand closed and light. You're not squeezing it so much that it can't turn, but it's not open enough to fly out of your hand. Now, the purpose of this basic twirling motion or combat cane spinning motion is to get your heart rate up, to start to build callus on your hand, to develop proprioception or awareness in your body of how this thing is gonna move through space and time. You need spatial awareness. Timing and distance is always important in self-defense. You're gonna get a lot of that from this basic spinning motion. The next thing I'm gonna have you do is start to turn your hand over and bring it back. Turning it over and bringing it back I'll slow it down and we'll speed it back up. I like to say this is just like slapping in backhand across the face. You're just coming down and back, making that sideways figure eight or the infinity sign. The other hand is up and you're gonna hold it in this way. It's good to see you, hello. And you're bringing this hand in for protection of your head. Always when we talk self-defense, especially against a violent assault, a violent attack, you wanna keep the hand up to guard your head. Don't let them knock you out or turn off your operating system. Try to think of it in those terms, basic terms. As you get used to this motion, you can start to speed it up. If you're using an oak cane like this one, you're gonna build speed, strength, power. You're gonna improve your grip strength from this motion right here. You can use this if you need to for self-defense, swinging through, swinging back, I like you to do this more as a warm up to keep your body safe from injury during the rest of this workout. After you've done this for 30 seconds, go to the other hand, start that same cranking motion. From this angle, I'm just making a circle, pushing away, pulling back in, add a little bit of speed, stomach up and in. Again, your hand is closed, but not tight. The faster you go, the more stress it's gonna put on your body and that's going to start to make it uh, squeeze. You're going to start to squeeze your abs. Hello, second watcher. It's good to see you. So you're going around. Your heart rate's coming up. You're engaging your core. Your posture's improving. Start to go over and back, side to side. Get your other hand up. Learn to move around your body and fight from behind your walking cane. Self-defense with a cane or cane self-defense requires that you keep it all tight especially if they have that knife. You don't wanna allow them to come in at all. You wanna learn how to practice with these small motions, meaning that this is too much. It leaves me all open in the middle. I wanna get it really tight in the body. And I have the chair here because I want you to see that all of the things that I'm doing, let me see if I can give you a better angle with the chair. All the things that you're gonna do in this workout and in using the cane, the walking cane for self-defense. Everything you do standing, whether it's a jab or a striking motion, two-handed boxing style motion, two hands knocking them off there, taking out the legs, smashing on top of the head for self-defense, using the other part to strike up and in, over and fast. All those things can be done also sitting in your chair. So sitting in this position, you start with the same warm up, and I suggest strongly that if you don't need a chair, in other words, you're not in a wheelchair, you're uh, ambulatory, you don't use your cane for balance, or don't use your cane for balance that much, I still suggest if you're using this everyday walking cane 
as a self-defense tool, you should always practice from a seated position in addition to a standing position. And the reason is you might be sitting waiting for the bus and you have to defend yourself. Or maybe you're sitting on the airplane because you can take this onto the plane and you need to defend yourself. No matter what it is, blocking, striking, breaking with the crook, reaching up and snatching somebody down, you should practice that all from the seated position and the standing position. So I wanted to show you that here, especially if we talk close quarters combat, imagine you're in a confined space, a small room, and somebody comes up, they're on your side, your cane's on this side, you can bring it through here, you can turn it up here, you can bring it in front of your body, you can very quickly pop it up and strike. It's gonna be very effective, close quarters combat, confined self-defense situations, all those things, and they'll be better when you practice them. Go back to holding the cane in this position. Put your weight on it. This is my right hand. Put it in your right hand. Step in with your right foot. Bring your hands up and allow your hand to slide down to the shaft a little bit. That's one of the other reasons I want you to do this, so that you get this feel, this proprioception, so you don't have to look at it. From here, I want you to step in. And the first principle of self-defense with the cane is situational awareness. You're always gonna pay attention to what's happening around you, and hopefully, ideally, you'll respond to the threat before it gets close. But that's not always gonna happen. So you're gonna have all, you're gonna have basic principles that are gonna allow you to survive in, in any type of violent assault situations with your cane, whether it's a knife attack, multiple attackers, First thing I want you to learn how to do is step into the attack and put the cane between yourself and the threat. Now imagine the threat has a knife, and I don't have the knife with me right now, but the stick doesn't bleed, the cane doesn't bleed. So you're gonna put this, this is better than this, when they have a knife. If they have a knife and you have this, even if you know how to take a knife, or you've trained in how to take a knife, you have to have great explosive speed and impeccable timing and distance. You have to know so much. You have to have practiced it so many times. And then there's the luck factor of 30% probably. It's, it's 10% in most fights if you're evenly matched. Luck's gonna come in at least 10% of the time. If you're unevenly matched, if you're gonna win, luck is gonna increase. You're gonna need 20% luck, 30% luck. If they've got a knife, we're gonna say, and let's say you're the best knife fighter in the world, you know how to take them away, you're gonna need at least 10 or 20% luck. If you have a cane, you just reduce that need of luck dramatically because now you have reach. And if they have that knife, and they could even have a longer knife, they could have that uh, Bowie knife that, that, that uh, what was it, Crocodile Dundee, right? In that movie, that old 80s movie for those of you old guys like me. He has that big long knife. Well, you still have a longer stick you still have the advantage of distance between you and the threat. And you want to use that distance. You don't want them to close the gap and get that knife. It's just, and it's horrible what happens when the attacker has a knife and they get through your guard and get through your defenses and then you get stabbed and slashed and sliced. So you're going to step into the threat or you're going to step away from the threat. Neither one's not better than the other one. It's personal preference and it's dictated by what's happening, how fast they're coming in, whether you step in or step back. My conditioned response, because I've conditioned myself this way, is to always go in to the attack. So from here, if you go in or out, you're gonna put the cane between you and the threat. And that's going to make it harder for them to get to your body because they're gonna to have to go around your stick so you have the stick between you and the threat, your cane, and you're gonna use it to interrupt their line of sight. This is called a pattern interrupt, especially a predator or a thug or somebody who's practiced at intimidating people and harming people and uh, beating people, assaulting people. You need, hello, you need to interrupt their pattern of their expectations. They expect you to tremble, they expect you to recoil, they expect you to freeze. Most people freeze. So you're going to stick this in their line of sight and that interrupts their train of thought. It's, for them, it's, it's habitual. They've done it so many times, they're not thinking about it anymore. 
but their body, their brain is just feeding on it. They're feeding on the fear. All of a sudden, they've got a stick in their face. They've got to contend with your cane. It's not what they're used to. They're used to cowering. They're used to imposing themselves on the victim. Now, you're going to impose, you're going to impose this heavy, thick piece of hard wood right through their temple, right through their eyesight for self-defense, through their neck, through their shoulder, through that clavicle bone. You're going to break it through the arm that has that knife, that hand. Slash and strike as hard and as viciously as you can using, using this cane for self-defense. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about um, traditional martial arts where everything has to look a certain way and be pretty and be esoteric and be aesthetic and, and, and work perfectly with the perfect partner. We're talking about a big stick with a hook on the end, just keeping them back. And that's what this is. So cane self-defense, practical cane self-defense starts with pay attention, get in a better position, using the stick between you and the threat. And you should write this down, by the way, unless you've got it memorized like I do. Situational awareness, let's pay attention. What's happening as it's happening. Number two, better position. And make a little side note. Put the stick between you and the threat. Create a pattern interrupt. Interrupt their line of sight. In uh, the shooting, we call that the sight picture. I want to interrupt their sight picture. I don't want them to have that sight picture and then that just feeds their adrenaline and that feeds their aggression. I want it to stop that aggression. I want them to have to think, do I really want to go for this? This guy's got a big stick or this girl's got a big stick and it's right in my face. Are they going to hit me with that? I want them to think about that. And the answer is absolutely. You get too close, it's about self-defense. You have the right to defend yourself. So from here, better position. And then I want you to now start practicing basic strikes using your self-defense cane from the shoulder to the other side coming through to the hip or to the ribs coming through here. This is angle one. You're going to learn seven basic angles and then a few other strikes. This first angle coming from your shoulder. And what I'm starting to slowly do or gradually do is increase the speed and the power of the strike. And the reason that you're going to do that in this workout as a beginner using your self-defense cane or intermediate, even if you're advanced, is you want to put stress on your grip. In other words, when I come through this hard, my hand is now fighting to keep this in control. You don't want the first time that you go full speed, full power for self-defense to happen on the street in the middle of that violent assault when the guy's got a knife or you have multiple attackers and some have weapons, and, or whatever the scenario is. You don't want to be slicing and striking and striking full speed, full power, and lose your stick, lose your cane for self-defense, because then you won't be able to defend yourself. That's the whole purpose. So during this practice, angle one, coming from the same side to the opposite side, down, slow at first, gradually increase, increasing speed, up to 30 seconds, and then go to angle two. Do you see that fancy move? You can practice that, by the way. That's a holdout from another style of martial art. Some of you picked up on it, you FMA guy. From here, one, following all the way through, bring it to the other shoulder, two. Practice angle one and angle two together. One, two, one, two. Harder, stronger, faster. After 30 seconds, switch hands and do the same thing on the other side. Start with angle one for 30 seconds. Then add angle two. Do that fancy move over your head if you want. But this and this is just as good. And let me show you what is happening on the target. From here, I'm not coming up. It's almost leaning to the camera's too, too low, right? Let's fix that. I can move the camera. Hold on for just a second. Don't get nauseous when I move it like that. All right. From here, that's got a lot of strength. It's got a lot of power. But I've got high ceilings, relatively high ceilings. If you're in a bus, if you're on a plane, if you're sitting in that chair and the ceiling's right here, or you're standing and you're on the subway, or you're in your house and you're defending yourself, this is a great um, thing to have next to the, the door when you go in. This is good to have next to the bed at night to reach for it when you hear something. 
if this is your only choice for self-defense, this is a really good choice, right? But if you're in a confined space and you have a low ceiling, you want to be able to strike. What's happening, watch here, is I'm coming. It's not, it's not going up at all. It's from here, it's coming straight. Let's see if I can do this, slow motion. Straight and through to the other side. So we were on the other side, weren't we? But we're coming one, two, one, two. And even if you wanna do that fancy thing over your head, this is a good way. That's kind of where that comes from, that idea of not bringing your hand like this. And the other thing that I said at the very beginning of this workout, which is you're gonna fight from behind your cane. You're gonna keep everything tight. These, this is wrong. But this is where you'll be because your strength is here at the beginning. Your uh, control is here. Your spatial awareness is out here because you're not used to doing it yet. So use a mirror. Put your camera phone on. Watch yourself and make sure you're fighting nice and tight from here to here. And now add angle three. I'm going to lower the camera a little bit. Hold on. Good. I should say take a deep breath so you don't get nauseous. It's like riding a roller coaster, right? If you breathe, you won't get that nauseous. Bringing it up from here to the other side, down and here to the other side. Drop it, bring it up, drop it, bring it up. And it's the same as that ceiling principle before, bringing it up here and think you're breaking the ribs. If they're reaching out, trying to punch, trying to stab, trying to grab you, you're breaking the hand, you're breaking the arm, creating distance between you and the threat. And your palm, when you start on the same side, right side, right hand, your palm is going to face the sky. And the reason that it faces the sky is that when you run into their body, it's going to push back against your grip. And it's not going out of your hand. It's not going to come out of your hand. If your palm is facing the wrong direction, this is the, really, there's not a lot of complexity in these moves. I want you to learn just a little bit. But if your palm is facing down, when you go right side to the left side this way, and I'm going to show you how this is different than this in just a second. But from here, if I bring it up here, and I've got a lot of oil on this thing last night. I, oiled it, I soaked this in oil for two nights. Um, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you, Wilson. Um, it starts to peel out of my grip. When I run into resistance, if my palm is facing down and I'm coming up here, it's just going to peel it. it just, it's, it's leverage, right? That's why you turn it palm up this way. And if you go on the other side, you can then have your palm down because it's going to push into your thumb coming up the other way. And you'll, you'll feel it when you practice. So let's put the first four together. One, two, palm up, three, four. Number five is going to be a horizontal strike. And again, back to principles of self-defense situation awareness. Number two, better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Number three, ask yourself what you have to take a breath first. Breath centers you, and a fight's gotta be fast. When you fight, you're gonna fight as fast as you possibly can. And you're gonna, you're gonna overwhelm. Violence of action, the Navy SEALs say. Violence of action, Delta Force says. Violence of action, um, yeah, that's great. That, you're right, that's a really good uh, uh, thing to put on your, your stick. Struggling for my words today. Violence of action, Marine Force, Marine Corps, <laughs> Marine Force. Marine Corps Force Recon, Force Recon. And then the Air Force has got the what? Uh, um, the Air Force doesn't have violence of action. They have violence of action, but it's coming from, you know, 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet. And then it's, I mean, it's the most violence of action you can get. That plus the guns on the big Navy ships off, uh, off of shore. Um, Minwax, yeah, Milwaukee. We're on the same page. You've got the autocorrect. I've got the autocorrect in here messing me up. Um, that's a joke, right? Anyway, uh, yeah, Minwax. I use, I use Minwax products, but I think this is linseed oil. This is linseed oil, and I go back and forth between two different oils, and then all the ones that I carry, like the, the ones that my everyday carry cane, the links are below, by the way. If you want to see what these canes cost and look like, and they're very inexpensive, it's a great investment in your self-defense. Um, the link is below, so go there and see. But the other ones I use, I use men wax. I use a, I use wax and I seal it, and I just keep doing it. 
Yeah, it, it does. This one is just so oily. It's, it's like my hands are oily now. But, so it, but that's okay because that forces me to fight harder to hold on to it. it. Makes it a little bit harder. This is not my everyday carry. My everyday carry has a beautiful finish. Comes from Kane Masters that way. It's the, it's the, if you go to the link below, it, it's the fourth option. You'll see is the one that I carry. It's a tactical cane. It's a combat cane. It's beautiful. It's got little eyeballs there. It's got a really nasty looking uh, nose that comes through for self-defense. You know, ripping through for self-defense. It would create a lot of damage for self-defense. Anyway, back to this one. Seven strikes. We're going to seven strikes. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, horizontal. And for the same reason, you're Palm is up, so when you run into it, it goes through your thumb and doesn't peel out of your hand. And then when you bring it back, same reason, palm down, runs into your thumb. See how I'm pushing and the force is coming here. If my hand were up, as I pushed back, it would peel right out of your hand. And with a little bit of effort, it's coming out of your hand. So pay attention. Those are the only things you really have to pay attention to as far as intricate details go, is palm up, palm up, when you're coming from the same side to the opposite side. Put in the other hand, practice those. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to let you see all where they're starting and stopping. Five, six, and number seven. Just straight down the middle. It's probably the most effective. It's the most basic. From here, it's my left hand, left foot forward. I step into, because that's me, or you can step back as long as your cane is between you and that knife, creating distance between you and the threat, multiple attackers. From here, angle one, Angle two, three, four, five, six, and then straight down is number seven, and then you put it on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to see what you guys are saying. I like to respond when I can. One, I don't always see them though. They sometimes disappear. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's how this uh, global community of cane, caners worldwide, and cane fighters and cane spinners and whatever we, we, we want to, whatever you want to call yourself, I'm going to call myself um, the guy with the cane. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I'm saying. Cane self-defense man. The, the masters of cane self-defense man. Whatever. No, I don't, I don't need a title. From here, one, two, three. Not, not if you have a title that it's a problem. I'm just saying, for me, I don't need one. Five, six, I just want to make sure that it works and I'm able to defend myself. And if I'm giving you some information and I give you the wrong information and I find out, I'll correct it. I'm going to say, hey, I was wrong. Because one thing I've learned in my life is that I've always been, I've often, but not always, I've often been wrong. And as my mentor, Dan Pena says in the castle in Scotland, he says, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. And that just goes back to, you know, you might not commit. You might be wrong, but commit to it. And then when you learn you're wrong, be willing to change. That's how you grow. That's how you become a better martial artist. You have seven strikes. I have down, down, up, up, through, back, straight down the middle. And always get them as tight as you can. Get tighter. Learn to fight from behind your stick. Fight from behind your cane, especially if they've got a knife. Now, the second thing I'm going to show you is supported strikes. How you put one, two hands on your cane at the same time and how that's going to give you more strength and power and when you're going to use that. You're going to use it a lot when you're seated. You're going to use it when you block. The first thing that you're going to think about, someone's going to try to smash something on your head. You're going to push your cane up and you're going to block it. This hardwood cane is going to block just about everything. You can push to the side and you can push to the other side. See this angle? This angle is very traditional in martial arts and there's a reason for it because things hit and then they deflect. From here, here, here. Practice now, and this is gonna be great for your shoulders, by the way. It's gonna get you healthier, get you younger, live longer with better health. You're gonna have flexibility, mobility. Um, what are the others? Strength and endurance. Flexibility, mobility, strength and endurance. Muscular endurance. Pushing up, pushing over, pushing over. Just practice one, two, three, and then down. That's four basic blocks that you're gonna do with your combat cane or your walking cane, cane self-defense. High block, angle here, angle there. 
just notice that one hand is above my head, one hand is below my head. That's the, the basic rule. Don't overthink it. Block up, block over, block over, block down. All of the blocks are gonna start from the middle line of your body, from your chest, pushing up, pushing over, pushing over, pushing down. One, two, three, four. So you have seven strikes, four basic blocks. Let's review those strikes, then we'll review the blocks, and then we're gonna add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Other hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. High block, side, side, side and up, right? And down. You could also do down into the side, and down to the side if you want. But as long as you know the basic idea is get the stick between you and the threat. Ideally, if it's a knife, use the length of your stick. If they have, they're, they're on top of you and they're trying to choke you to death and you can bring your cane up here, you're gonna smash their hands into you and then just use the bar. Think of this as a bar. Put that bar right through the throat. Put the bar through their teeth. Their teeth will separate from their jaw and go down their throat, literally, for self-defense. Into the nose, smashing everything. Into the eyes, they can't see, their eyes are watering, they're choking on their own blood for self-defense. And through the throat, that's fatal for a, you know, but be careful with that one. Make sure it's a life or death situation. If they're attacking you and you've got a cane and they, they thought you were going to be weak and you were an easy target, maybe it is life or death. Maybe that's all you have to know. From here, your hands are here. You bring it in. That high block, side, side, low block if you want to block down, block down. But think of the hands are on your chest, comes here, pull it in. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna run, that bar is gonna push, put pressure, immense pressure on the nerves in the top of the arm, which if you've never felt them, I hope one day we can be, see each other in person and I'll show you. It's one of my favorite things to do is put pain. So not break anything, not tear anything, but show you how all this stuff works for real. But you pull it in here, right? You bring it up, you pull it down, and then punch with one hand or with the other hand. And what's happening is it's gonna to go to one side of the head, of the bad guy, one side for self-defense or the other side of the head. They had their, they put their hands on you. You were here and you were, you were saying, back up, don't get any close. And all of a sudden they're there. You bring it up, crank it down, and then punch with one, punch with the other one, or just straight in. And like I said, this, this, is, this is hard to the side of the head. That's bad enough. Once you put them in pain here and you go straight in, because they're coming forward, and you go straight through their face, that's devastating for them. It works great for self-defense for you. This is a self-defense video. How to stay safe against a violent assault or cane self-defense against violent assault episode one. We're gonna show you all these cool techniques in the next couple episodes. But I wanted you to have something to start with for today. The last thing I'm gonna show you, because everybody asks, well, what do you do with the hook or the crook? What do you do with that? And I'm gonna show you just one basic, basic thing to do. And it's going to come from this position because this is where we started this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about this position and this position and how to do things from here. But for right now, I'm here. I bring it up. You have that basic strike. Now think about your hand in a different way and think about pulling that hook across their face. And I'm not only laughing and smiling because I can just imagine. I've never seen it. And I'm not going to lie and say that I did this, the guy got, tried to get me, and I was like that. But I can only imagine, because when I do this just lightly across my face, it gets stuck. On my, even as sweat as I am, it gets stuck on different parts of my face, and I feel those nerves in there. Think about the ear. Think about that temple. Think about the eyes, how easy it would be to remove the, for self-defense. The eyeball, take the nose straight off the face for self-defense. Rip the teeth out of the mouth for self-defense. Break the jaw. Remove the jaw. Or go, yeah, it's all rips, Sky Dog, going right through the neck, right through the throat, self-defense, or just even on their chest. And it just, I mean, just that flesh, all that stuff going through there for self-defense. So you're here. We, let's go to the, eight, the uh, seven strikes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then think of just stepping up and raking, ripping everything, either face, body, in through their stomach, in through their thighs or their legs, and that's what I wanted you to see for now. There's a million ways to use every piece of this cane. 
but I wanted you to see that. This, this is the hardwood cane. The link's below. This is like 40 some bucks, which uh, shipping is a little bit more. It's a great Christmas present. Um, for yourself, buy yourself something nice, right? You gotta buy stuff for the kids and everybody else. Get them all the fancy stuff. Get yourself a down and dirty self-defense walking cane. Or look at the link below. There's some real pretty fancy ones in there. I've got, I've got all of them, the everyday carry canes. But this is great. The nice thing about having more than one cane, if you have two canes, get a dojo training cane and then get one of the higher level canes. And even the higher level canes on the link below are not that expensive, but they've got a lot of really nasty features for self-defense. So take a look at the link if you're interested. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I always forget to say that. Um, and thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Put your comments below and I'll see you guys in a little bit.